Hi, I'm Karen Boniker, painter, master, elite, and I'd like to share with you some of the new brushes in Painter 2019 and some of the best ways to use these brushes. This painting was created with the new, with some of the new thick paint brushes in Painter 2019. And I think it's important that when you first begin using these brushes, you have a good understanding of how to get the best out of them, to not get frustrated with them, and to really enjoy the process of painting with some of the most realistic, natural media brushes that I have ever worked with. So let me share with you some of the ideas that I have that should help you to get off to a good start using these brushes. What I have done here is opened up a and created a custom palette that I have pulled out those brushes that I'm going to be using and some of the tools that I'm going to be using uh, so it makes it easy for me to progress along here and show you just exactly how great these brushes are to work with. We're going to start off with the first brush called the medium or grainy medium palette knife and this is a beautiful brush again you'll find it in the thick paint brush categories when I start to paint uh, one of the things that I like to do um, is I rarely rarely will work on a white canvas instead I like to apply some texture to it whether I use a file place command and bring in a texture or I simply um, fill the canvas uh, with a layer well, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this, and I'm going to choose uh, using our new wonderful color wheel here, uh, just a mid-gray value so these brushes will show up nicely. I'm using the Control F or Command F keystroke to fill the layer, the canvas layer, with a solid color. And we'll just refresh that. And when I'm working with uh, palette knives or thick paint in particular, I like to make sure that I set up the appropriate lighting to begin with. For me, um, in my particular process, I like going up to the canvas menu, choosing the surface lighting option, and coming down to the thick paint only shadow options. I set mine to 2%. And this is my happy place where I like the effect of the paint. I like the shadow that it casts. It isn't overly saturated, and I feel it creates a very natural looking brush stroke. So I'm going to select OK. And we'll begin by laying down a brush stroke so you can get kind of a feel for this particular brush. And you can see that it's a beautiful thick, uh, picks up a lot of nice texture. And when I work with the brush, uh, you'll also notice that it adds a new thick paint layer. Now this would be familiar to you if, you're, if you've worked with watercolor or liquid ink in uh, Painter. You'll notice, you will notice that it does add a special layer, and this happens to be the thick paint layer, and this is uh, what happens when you're working with thick paint. Now I'm going to choose Control A or Command A backspace to clear that canvas out, and we're going to make uh, a couple of other adjustments here. When I work with thick paint, I also enjoy working with paper texture. And I'm going to choose this gessoed canvas paper texture. And I'm going to come over to my property bar and I'm going to open up what we call the thick paint media panel. And when you're working with thick paint, you're going to want to have this open as you're working because it gives you that opportunity to work through these different sliders to uh, uh, change the type of the brush that you're getting from either painting with grain, simply painting, plowing paint, plowing paint with grain, or erasing. And let's just go through those. 
We've chosen the paint option here, so we're going to lay in a few brush strokes. And you'll notice that it's a very smooth, very smooth brush stroke. Picking up a few colors so you can just see how beautifully this brush blends those colors together. One of my favorites. The next option is paint with grain. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that it's picking up paper texture. And so when I paint with that brush, you can see now that the brush is picking up the uh, paper texture that's currently chosen. Now, the other thing you'll want to do here is to make sure that you open up that paper panel because having it open will give you that opportunity to adjust the options here from scale to contrast all the way down to paper brightness. So you can see as I adjust that, bring it up a little higher, I get different kinds of texture coming through. If I go way up, it's going to give me even different. And then if I bring that down to quite a small texture size, you can still that it's, see that it's still picking up texture, but it's a little more subdued. And this is the place where I like to be. I like this feeling of texture uh, within my brush stroke, but I don't like it to be overdone unless I'm going to be using that texture somewhere in the painting to um, evoke texture somewhere, like some mountains or cliffs or rocks. So this all comes into play as you're working. Command A backspace, we're going to clear that out again, and we're going to look at plow paint. Now plow paint is another uh, option that you have here where you can uh, work with it, work with different colors and plow through the paint. I'm going to go back to paint with grain. Let me give it a different color here. Look at how that color mixes. Beautiful. And then let's go back to plow paint. And sometimes it's good to add a new layer here, new thick paint layer. And then I can work right over the top of that or go back to this layer and plow through that existing paint. Plow paint with grain does the same thing except it gives you more texture as you plow through the existing paint. So these brushes are all set up for optimally for you to uh, work with. The eraser is just what it says. It'll erase those brush marks. And you'll use this every once in a while to um, take paint away. And that is how those work. And these, just these simple steps here will get you off to a great start. Grainy Smooth Blender. This is a beautiful brush too. You can see how as I go over those brush strokes, you can see how it breaks up the pixels and kind of blends them. We'll make sure that brush is set to default. And as it's blending those pixels, you can see that it's also in, uh, applying some texture based upon the current paper texture that's selected. The next brush is the uh, grainy, thick, and wet. We'll make sure we reset that to default. And you can see that this is a very wet. I'm going to bring my brush size down a little bit and clear these canvases out. Very wet, but very expressive brush stroke. Let's bring in some color here. So you can see how you can do some beautiful blending with these wetter brushes, but still pick up that paper texture, get a really fine uh, expression 
at the end of the brush. Just beautiful. Real bristle trail off. We're going to select the reset option. This is probably my favorite uh, brush in the new brushes, uh, the new thick paint brushes. Um, I, I love it for uh, creating trees. Um, it's just extremely, extremely expressive. You can get very, very loose with it and just create very nice shapes. Use it. Remember to always change your brush size when you're working. Get a good variety of brush strokes working for you. I call it almost a Richard Schmidt type brush where it's very feathery at the edges, very expressive. And you can see that it's a beautifully um, artistic style brush. Now this painting was done with simply using all four of these new brushes in Painter 2019. And let me go through some of the steps that I took to build this painting up so you can get a feel for process, how things build up with thick paint, and the importance, I think, also of using layers. I think that really comes into play uh, with these beautiful brushes. I started off with a canvas texture on the uh, canvas and, and placed it on the canvas layer. So I sized this canvas so it is one that I use quite often um, so I can just open it up. I know that it's exactly the right size and resolution for what I need to do. And I typically start off with a uh, sketch. And the sketch is done on its own layer and usually I will set that sketch um, sketch layer to multiply blend mode. And that way I can um, work with that sketch in transparency through the layers. So as I start to build layer upon layer of thick paint, I can also see that guide or my sketch showing through to help me as I go forward in the painting process. So I used the um, first brush was the Real Bristle Trail Off that I used pretty extensively through this entire process. I decided upon a certain color scheme and many times what I will do is I will use my, and I'm going to open this up, and I'll open the mixer pad and I use the mixer pad quite often along with my new color wheel to uh, sample colors and mix colors actually on the mixer pad. Um, I'm a fan, um, I love the work of Richard Smith. he's one of my favorite artists, and so I decided to inspire this little painting based upon um, the color scheme that I saw in one of his paintings and this is where I was going with this one. So I like the color scheme, so I'm going to try and stick with that and keep working through it um, the entire painting. So on the new thick paint layer, uh, using the Real Bristle Trail Off brush, I started just blocking in um, ideas of color, shape, form, and uh, just keeping it very loose, very expressive, and very simple. There's nothing um, very detailed about this part of the painting. It, it, it just is a option for you to form your ideas, to resolve your color harmony, and to get the direction you need to go as you move forward in the painting. As I'm going forward, you can see that I start to resolve a little bit more. I'm continuing to add in darker values, lighter values, seeing how each value relates to each other. 
Am I creating depth? Am I creating good, strong value contrasts throughout the painting? So these are the things I'm always thinking about as I'm working through my paintings. Here I take it a little bit further. I'm going a little farther along with color, with value, starting to block in a little more and playing with value and my darkest values and making sure that they're working as I continue to build the painting. In this painting, you can see where I've started to develop a little more detail. Um, I've started working a little in the foreground area, developing the lights and darks, making sure that I have um, good atmosphere going on, um, and just starting to bring in some of those little details that, that really matter. Little touches of light, little areas of repeated color. These all go into making really fun and engaging landscape paintings. As I continue with my, uh, with my paintings, many times I won't settle on a particular orientation for the finished piece. And instead I start to um, pull out a little bit, think about flipping it vertically and horizontally. And I keep that uh, option on my thick paint demo here on this custom palette where I can actually flip the image uh, horizontally back and forth so I can view it to make sure that it's holding together the way I feel it should. And in the end, I finished the painting by maintaining this particular orientation and also played a li little bit with adding some um, visual texture over the top of the image to enhance it a little bit further. So these, these thick paint brushes um, can seem intimidating, I think, when you first start using them. But I believe that um, if you take it simply and work with this particular panel, keeping it open all the time, understanding um, how brushes work in terms of uh, painting with grain. And I'm going to uh, mention one thing here that I think is very important, especially if you want to impart that feeling of paper texture into your painting, that take a look at the grain height of the brush that you're using and if you're painting with grain. If you choose a particular paper texture, and I'm going to show you this vis visually, we'll just choose File, New, and again we'll just set up a small canvas here that we can work on. And let me also once again fill that with a color so you can see these brush strokes clearly. And I'm going to take this real uh, bristle trail off and I'm going to bring the grain height down to a very low setting. And uh, we'll pick a contrasting color here. And I want you to take a look at this particular brush stroke. And then as we bring the grain height to a higher setting, notice how we start to get more of that paper texture coming through. And as we go higher and higher, we're going to get more of that texture of the paper being imparted into the brush stroke. Until finally, you know, we get this really heavy texture coming through. And this would apply to any of those thick paint brushes that you're using. So if, if you're working on a painting and all of a sudden you say, I'm not getting the grain height or I'm not getting the grain in that particular brush stroke that I'm looking for, be sure to take a look at the grain height setting and if you need more paper texture to reveal itself within that brush stroke, then consider bringing the setting up to a higher uh, percentage to gain that beautiful um, look of texture coming through in your brush strokes. Okay. 
So I'll rarely settle for any particular um, finished image and oftentimes will create several renditions of the finished image. And this one I like because um, of the aerial perspective that was created uh, in terms of the warm side of the painting and the cool side of the painting. And so for that reason, I, I really enjoyed looking at this one and finishing this one in that way. Um, and then you have all kinds of opportunities to continue to play with a wonderful array of brushes in uh, Painter 2018, working with some blending brushes in the, in the foreground area here um, to soften this up a little bit and bring attention to the area of interest, the focal area, where your lightest light and your darkest dark will reside and your highest detail. So thank you for joining me. I'm, I'm so excited to again introduce you to these thick paint, new thick paint brushes in Painter 2018 and to hopefully get you off to a good start with them and to uh, set you free to enjoy them. All right, have fun, take care.